Good day and welcome to another video of the SEO and BRICS. Now today I'm going to have a talk about something that's recently uh, occurred that will be, I think, will definitely be of interest. It's about the BRICS is looking to strengthen its position in several fronts at once. It plans to create a common grain exchange. This will strengthen the importance of Russia as a key supplier in the world market, but in Increase the food security of the various uh, states who are involved in BRICS and uh, who um, want to be involved uh, in BRICS. Also, it will transform international trade and not in favour of the Western producers. At the end of last year, the Russian Union of Grain Producers uh, and Exporters produced the Russian Ministry of Agriculture about setting up a grain exchange for the BRICS and the SEO members and those who want to participate. This would better reflect what's really going on in the global market. I mean, if you look back at how the modern infrastructure of the world markets was developed after World War II, this was when the main supplier of wheat and grain uh, and corn was the United States and Canada. Therefore, the major market benchmarks are <coughs> made by quotes on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, and they use the dollar as their clearing currency. As a result, BRICS members cannot fully participate in the setting of prices for basic agricultural products. And they face manipulation by third parties, uh, <coughs> including speculators, the major multinationals. So anybody who knows anything about markets knows that that is likely to happen. And it's not about supply and demand, but it's about who has control of the benchmarks and the market. At the same time, the largest producers and consumers of grain are in the BRICS. Russia alone accounts for 25% of the global trade, and they've got no say in how the market currently functions. According to estimates of the Union of Exporters, the five countries of the old BRICS account for 40% of the world's grain market. The total production is 1.17 billion tonnes, and the consumption is 1.17 billion. So in January, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia and the UAE joined the international organization BRICS and the figures are now 1.23 and 1.22 billion respectively. So a BRICS grain exchange would bring together the leading buyers and suppliers. Russian exporters wanted this initiative and I think they're going to get it. It's been supported by Vladimir Putin and uh, has got support amongst the other members of BRICS, plus those who wish to be there. Now, what are the main benefits to um, a BRICS exchange? Well, it eliminates most of the manipulation. Most co economists and analysts admit that there really is a problem and the current order needs to change, both in the interests of Russia and other countries and taking into account the great potential of the entire BRICS and those who depend on them. The USA and Canada cannot be allowed to continue their dominance and manipulation of the markets. When <coughs> setting prices on the trading platform, the countries of uh, the West use tools that have nothing to do with civilized market mechanisms and are predominantly the collusion of resellers and who use false information through the controlled media uh, to manipulate the market. These are the modern realities, whereas this new grain exchange will bring back competition and show uh, the real price of grain and stop the bandits in the market. Uh, and it will bring a fair price market uh, to that. That was according to Yuri Belakorov, who's the professor at the Institute of World Economy at the Russian Financial University. Now, of course, it's a logical step that the countries uh, with different standards of living, the volatility of their national currencies, want to have an independent regulation on the basis of a clear and convenient rules and not rely on the foreign instruments of the uh, IC, uh, International Commodities Exchange, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, etc., so that uh, they can increase their food security. The new grain exchange will ease uncertainty and ensure stability of supply in the market, uh, get rid of the speculators, and allow them to uh, disrupt the global logistics and it'll 
it just increases the food shortages in the, in sub-Saharan Africa, parts of Asia, when they start to play around with it. You only have to look at the Arab Spring of um, the 2011-2012 to see what happens when uh, food prices go sky high uh, and people can't get the basic necessities. So, at the moment, the situation is as follows. Russia, China and India supply grain and the prices are determined by the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Moreover, due to sanctions, exporters can be prohibited from uh, accessing the market. So, alternative trading platform, it makes absolute sense and we'll actually have some food justice for a change. Now, <coughs> One of the major benefits is uh, Russia, Shanghai, uh, New Delhi will influence uh, and strengthen their position as the most important suppliers of uh, and consumers of grain and fertilizers. Agricultural diplomacy will become much more complicated, and what I mean by diplomacy, I mean dominance. And they will find uh, uh, that their position will change dramatically. Ultimately, the West is going to have to recognise the new realities that are taking place in the world and that the BRICS uh, will start to use their collective clout from an economic and production um, level uh, to make sure that, um, that there is food justice in, uh, in the world and everybody gets a fair crack. Now, although the project's currently under development, but it's expected to launch very, very quickly and become a global trading structure for grade turnover, certainly within the BRICS and those who want to be associated. And I think with the introduction of the, uh, the BRICS trading and settlement system for using national currencies uh, and other monetary units, this means that the US dominance using the dollar cutting countries off from SWIFT will simply disappear and the countries can actually get on to uh, a fair and free trading mechanism. Accordingly, uh, this is all going to happen and it's BRICS again. Now, this is all part of the major transformation. Uh, as some of you may be aware, uh, the Russians were kicked out of the London Bullion Markets Association and its gold was not allowed to be traded. Now, that has not dramatically impacted the Russian gold sector. In fact, uh, it hasn't changed it at all. And the recent news that the, the International Metals Exchange in, uh, in London have barred Russian aluminium, copper and nickel uh, from being traded. So how long before the BRICS bring in their own commodities trading platforms for all of the different commodities that they produce, bearing in mind that uh, all of them, Russia uh, is in metals, China with rare air metals, etc. So we shall see. Uh, I certainly think it's all going to continue. Anyway, articles like this one uh, I'm quoting from are available on the website, so please do uh, go to the website if you want more information, if you want access to quality information, do um, visit there. It's seobricksiteinsight.com and uh, do like and subscribe and I look forward to making another video for you all again in the near future. Thank you again uh, for your likes, subscribes and all your kind comments. Thank you.